So far we were talking about the spherot, just the way we know them. And we spoke about in a way that every sphera acts according to its individual definition. For example, uh, we have sferata chesed. Sferata chesed, kindness would only act in the way of chasadim and expansion. And sferat gvura would only act upon uh, in the matter of, uh, of din and constriction. In, in the definite reality, which is really complex, it, it's not necessarily so, and it's not accurately so. But rather, every sphera, as we said before, includes another 10 spherot with it, or inside of it, where all the spherot also include each one 10 inside of them, and so on and so forth, until basically infinite uh, you know, possibilities or whatever possibilities will be. I'm not an actuary. I'm not going to be able to tell you. So, for example, Sferata Chesed would have inside of it also a attribute or quality that's called Keter Shebe Chesed, right? How the Sfera of Keter is being reflected on Chesed and Chochma Shebe Chesed and Bina Shebechesed, and Tiferet Shebechesed, and so on and so forth. And this is, this is what happens in all the Sferot altogether. And you could really see the situation as different, uh, uh, you know, volumes that come up from previous volumes, you know, and new editions and so on and so forth. When every uh, volume or edition becomes a certain shape or tzura for a spiritual phenomenon internally in the person and in the world itself in general. So in the first stage, let's talk about it, let's say in Olama Atzilut, we're going to find the first, first edition. In Olama Bria, we're already going to find the second edition. And we're going to find a, a condition that's called chesed shebechesed, or gvura shebechesed. And so in, in Olam Abriya, we're also going to find, Olam Abriya will be the, the third edition, and we're going to find situation of gvura shebechesed shebegvura. It's going to multiply. And, and every, every edition, the, the illumination become more and more specific. In other words, reality and with all its uh, 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 complexity and, and, and internal the, you know shading and so on and so forth and the further we go down on the world the revelation of the spherot becomes more and more complex and, and uh, when all and, and when, when all those volumes in our world are already super complex so the higher you go, the more plain it is. In Keter, you have Chesed, Gvura, and so on and so forth. And then you go on and, and, and you go down to what we have here. So for example, we said that the, the operation field of the, of the Nefesh uh, is, is, uh, uh, is, is operated by the lower spherot, which is uh, what we call nehi, netzach, od, yesod. And there are many ways in which they could act and interact. There are many uh, motives that could stand behind the uh, variety of operations and, and possibilities that you can do. By the way, this is one of the, uh, you, you might say to me, Wait, wait, wait a minute. So we actually got the short end of the stick. We have so, it's so complex, we can't really move. I'm going to tell you, no, you don't understand. It is necessary to be complex in our, in our world in such a way so we could choose. If you're going to elevate yourself all the way to the Olam Aratzilut, there's no way to choose. It's, you know, Yesod is Yesod, and, and that's it. It's like going to a store, and you're only going to find arguments like... Uh, one style of Levi's, one style of Wranglers, and one style of, I don't know what. That's it. Oh, basically, that's it. If you go to, or 
I just heard that it's very interesting. In uh, liquor stores, there is advantage and disadvantages. For example, there are certain states that the liquor store is state operated and certain states where it's individually operated. So what's the difference? In a state operated liquor store, you know, whoever does the shopping for the state decides, oh, we're going to have only A, B, and C. These are the only whiskeys we're going to have arguments like in the stores. These are the only types of vodka we're going to have in the stores and so on and so forth. So in a way, it's a disadvantage because you can expose yourself to such a great variety. However, it gets much cheaper because they buy for the whole entire state. They place an order for thousands of bottles. When you go to state where it's individual, you can have a great variety, but the prices are going to be up. So you got to have this in mind as well. That's the difference. So in order for us to be able to choose and, 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 and to be able to practice our free choice, we need to have a lot of variety. That's why when you create yourself more options, your ability to choose becomes greater. Many people are absolutely petrified by the ability to choose and they would rather be limited and they would rather be constricted and so on and so forth. And, and those aspects, uh, I mean, those things reflect to our lives altogether. For example, some people like big government. The government will decide everything for them. Some people say, no, I don't want big government. I want to choose what I want to choose. I don't want government to choose for me. So every actions that, that, that we do and every, everything that happens could really be painted in, in very specific shades and colors that those ferrot will create when they are mixing one another in this particular action, in this particular decision that are made and so on and so forth. It will be like the endless possibilities of shading that I would get the more paint I have. You know, you could create basically endless amount of shades because I have X amount of colors and then the basic colors and the secondary colors and, and multiple combinations and not all greens are the same. And it's, it's fascinating. And that's why it's important to go to nature. When you go to nature and, you know, I'm going to ask you, uh, what colors are the trees? They're, oh, they're green. But then you go to nature and you pause, and that's coming again to the, to the concept of non-action. And you looked around and you'll see that there are endless shades of green. Not all the greens. The green of a maple is different than the green of an oak, which completely different green than a spruce that is completely different green of a regular pine and so on and so forth. It's, it's amazing. It is a reflection of the choices and that we have here. And that's why we it needed to be this way. If a person, for example, does an act of chesed and, it, you know, kindness, and he does it from real true love, real mesirut nefesh dedication that, he, that, that really bubbles inside of him. He feels that he really wants to do so. Therefore, this action is not only superficial, but also has tremendous power to it. It's another force in it, another drive in it. And an action like this could really uh, only take place by having the sphera of chesed in what we call nehin, that's a hod yesod, Right, that coming out, uh, and and that happens in the plateau of Nehi, of Netzach Hodiyot, which is the action, or, or the plateau of action, and that it comes from the Koach of Chesed, which is a, a true internal power to give, or internal drive to give. So when you do something because you really, you really want to, you know, the reward is not going to be. The, 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 you know, monetary reward or this reward or that reward. The reward in, in, in a state like this is that you got the opportunity to give. The person that does something out of true love sees the reward in the fact that he was able to do it. And he's doing so because he wants to give, not because he's looking to get something. And it's a tremendous thing to analyze when you, uh, start, start uh, analyzing actions of people, whether it's in an interpersonal relationship, let's say between husband and wife. And, and Chazal told us this all along. Chazal told us uh, a love that is, that is dependent on something, right? 
you remove that something or that cause, you remove the love. Love that is not depending on anything. Love that comes from the sake of love would last forever. So when, when, uh, when we look at it this way, the sferot of netzachot yesod are sferot of actions. They are, they are executing. They're taking an external act, right? That the inner, that the drive is internal. And what is that internal drive? That's the sferat chesed. So through taking the sferat chesed and basically uh, implanting it as a, as a chip to the execution I mean, execution in terms of getting into something into action, not execution and killing. Uh, sferot, you know, manifesting them in the sferot of Nesachot Yesod, that's what able to give us the concept of willing to give and the ability to execute that will into an action. So you'll see that it's chesed in Nesachot Yesod. That's what we're good. If a person does, for example, an act of chesed, and he really thinks that that's the right thing to do, right? Because he really believes that you have to act according to uh, intellectual virtues, virtues, right? So therefore this action uh, could be uh, painted by the lights of what we call chesed, right? Bina, right? The, what we call endat, the chabad of nehi. So therefore the, the, the riveting, the driving uh, force behind it is going to be a thought which is different than the other one, which is really an emotion. So uh, that action would not have any kind, you know, when, when it's an emotion, and it's not, it's, it's, we say a, a, a passion, uh, you know, a crime of passion, right? You didn't think about it. You acted out of, out of, out of passion and emotion, emotional thing. And, and, and that's, you know, in, in, our, in our lives, there's also quite of a difference if you do something because you, predetermined, premeditated, or just like a, you know, an explosion of emotions. And now you understand where it's coming from. Now, if it's something is coming and it's not coming, if there's no emotion be behind that, so therefore it goes according to, to intellectual parameters. And that's, that's a different thing, you know, because all of a sudden, if you, argument's sake, if you got married because uh, to marry this woman made sense to you. It wasn't an emotion. It just made sense to you. Well, but something, something else can make sense to you. Which one is the right thing to do? There's no such thing. Yeah, always have to be a combination of both of them. Because you need all the whole entire spectrum of, of drives in creating a, 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 the appropriate picture. The internal uh, variety of all the uh, possibilities is really endless, and you really could not formulate the way it's being it's it's being it's all included. But you could really uh, get quite precise about 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 this thing by definition and understanding which sphera is reflected on that, and in a way you could awaken something in you you know you need to be able to do things so if you if you're a person that is completely logical and you realize that sometimes being completely logical is not the right way to go it's not what it calls for right you could awaken the midata chesed by teaching yourself to do so you kind of bring it up to the front page to the front stage by doing so uh, it will be like, and, and why, for example, being completely emotional or completely intellectual is not good? Because if we're talking about, you say, using tools, well, sometimes you need to use a ratchet, sometimes you need to use a, a wrench, and sometimes you need to use a hammer. But you can use only one tool for all, all possible things. It's not going to go. You have to, and, and that's what it is. We need to be a, a, a well prism that reflects all colors in our decision making that all take into, into part. There's certain things that we say that it's not, but that's beyond that. And that's really things that would, we defer to. And that is, that would be Lishma or things like Limut Torah that has, is associated with Keter, which is associated with that. Now, um, you could also, by, by analyzing phenomena or situations, 
or problems, it could help you diagnose. And we're dealing with such a great variety of, of, uh, of, uh, of possibilities of happen by, by simply analyzing and say, okay, this problem has too much din to it. So therefore I will have to do incorporate to balance it out. I will have to do chesed or this act is too chesed. I will have to, you know, introduce some, some din to it. I mean, if you want to talk about arguments like, uh, uh, you know, current events, let's say. So let's say you have a problem of overly chesed, overly willing to give. So to the point that you have open borders, everybody comes in and you give them all rights and so on and so forth. And therefore you overwhelm your system. And then that becomes into din because that over openness creates a restriction because there's a collapse of the system. So what do you need to do? You can't close your, you, you can't become North Korea. I mean, you could, but that's not something that you want to do. So you want people to come in. You want to give people hope. And that hope generates well-being to the, to the country altogether. But you can't be overly chesed and you cannot be overly din. So therefore, I, argument saying your immigration uh, uh, you know, policies has to be a combination of both. With your hand on the pulse to make sure that things don't get overboard one way or another. Because to be, again, completely strict, that's actually going to uh, hurt you in the long run. And to be completely unrestricted, that's also going to hurt you. You need to have a balance between those things are dynamic. So it needs to be changed more and so. When things become politics and they are being driven by policy, you are basically pulling the rug out of everything. Because that's an already uh, that's policy without uh, without reality, without checking those things and examining, is basically making decision out of the klipa, out of the husk, rather than out of the core. And 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 that has to go also with your interpersonal relationships. That has to go with so many different things. And I, again, I hate to. And I hate to, but you know, whoever doesn't like it doesn't have to like it. But I learned some things from martial arts, for example. And in martial arts is when you are dealing with somebody, let's say, for example, somebody says to you, okay, how do you fight? Well, how do I fight? It depends on who's fighting with me. If I'm fighting with somebody who is soft, I have to be hard. Hard becomes soft and soft becomes hard. So you have to adapt yourself to situations. But if I say by shita, by system, by dogma, I only do this, sometimes you're going to win, many times you're going to lose. Adaptation is, since life is dynamic and other attributes are involved with that, you need to be have, you have the ability to adapt. So adaptation is a very important uh, uh, component in, in, in living life. And we need to adapt the situation. You, things don't say like, and that, that even means sometimes even making religious reforms, you know, adapting to a situation. In the past, people adapt. And you know that the less willingness to adapt, the greater problem in the long run we have. So, uh, We, when we deal with the, uh, with the human uh, soul, we have to understand that the human soul is very dynamic. And by, by nature, it's moving. The soul is moving all the time. It's very dynamic. As long as we allow, it's very dynamic. So, and, and the system of the spherot inside your, your, yourself, inside your neshama, inside your spirit, uh, is, is, does not operate in, a, in an automatic, mechanical way. It's not a clock. It's dynamic. It's moving. It's changing. It works in a very, again, in a very organic, you know, organic manner. And the way that they are being formed, the spherot, and they interact with one another could change even during an, an one given action itself. For example, something caused the action. And because it's dynamic, because it's organic, while you are in this action, it will change. Okay? Uh, and that means to 
not to be set in your ways. You need to understand that. To be set in your ways, it's not good. You would change is good if you're able to recognize the causes and the direction of the change. You can actually root it to a good direction. If you leave it unattended, it could be catastrophic. And again, this is, you might tell me, what, what to me? This is Kabbalah. This is like, uh, I don't know, uh, life coaching. I don't know, call it whatever you want, but that's, that's Kabbalah. I don't care. You can call it, uh, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Call it cucumbers as far as I'm concerned. I don't care. But that's really understanding what it is. Uh, and, and this point, again, this point is very, very important to understand because if we were talking about an a, uh, autonomous, closed, automatic uh, system or, or configuration of things, so therefore our ability to maneuver will be very limited. The whole concept of free choice comes up again because of that. Our ability to change, to say I'm sorry, to take things back, to change our ways one way or another. It's because of that. That's, that's how we practice free choice. But uh, uh, since we see the, or the way that we view the human soul as something organic and alive, so therefore that by itself forced us, in, again, in a way to create a situation or to create a playing field where it's going to be uh, the ability to maneuver is basically endless. And the format that exists in the soul, in the nephesh of the person, is not really set in stone. And, they, and we could change them by many different ways. And the system of the spherot is a, uh, a, a, an instrument for expression, the endless essence of of the of of the of the of the nefesh itself of the human soul and because of that it, there's endless opportunities in it everybody could be a tzaddik everybody could be a rasha the rambam said it all along now whether you're going to tell me that the rambam knew kabbalah didn't know kabbalah it's, those arguments are so stupid and dumb there is the truth now if you want to say that rambam knew kabbalah because it serves a point for you so therefore, you are not really being objective. You're trying to prove something out of your inferiority. I don't know if the Rambam knew Kabbalah or knew Kabbalah. I know the Rambam knew Torah. And Torah is the truth. And Torah has many aspects to it. So those arguments, whether he knew Kabbalah, he didn't know Kabbalah, it's so pointless. It, it points, as far as I'm concerned, and I don't want to sound arrogant, but it, sounds, it's, it, it, it projects such ignorance on the person who would argue that. It's the truth. And the whole concept of Torah has many facets to it. Shivim panim la Torah. As long as it's called a Torah, yeah? You, you're not going to learn Zen Buddhism and tell me that's Torah, that's the way that, that's not, that's Zen Buddhism. Now, the Rambam refers to it as a person is born. Or, you know, nobody decrees upon you you're going to be a righteous man or, 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 or wicked man. You're going to be this or you're going to be the other one. It's up to you. Endless possibilities. That's what the Rambam writes. So to that, yes, it's pure Kabbalistic or pure philosophical, or pure whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> so so since, since the, 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 the system of the Sferot in, in the, in the as it's been reflected in the soul of the person, is really a vehicle to express this endless, right? It's very important to remember that when we find ourselves in a familiar situation, that it seems like, you know, we're in a dead end. You should know that it's not true. There's always an end. There's always a way out. Because even if you're in the same situation as you were yesterday, it only seems like this, but it is not like that. Because at the end of every day, there is a certain end to the person that lives in the day. When you go to sleep, and not even if you go to sleep, when it's a new day, and, and to that matter, not even in a new day, every minute or hour, or should I go hour, minute, second, millisecond, you are not the same person as you were before. 
every point, every point in time in your life, throughout your life, it is another frame in the picture of your life. If you take a, a, a camera, and then the more sophistic, sophisticated the camera, the more frames it will take per second. And if you're going to look at it, you're not going to see any movement because it seems like it's steady. But when you play it all at once, you see the person moving. Then you create a film. The more uh, frames per second or per minute, the more real the movie would look. I mean, there will be a difference between taking a, a, a movie with a very sophisticated camera that does it or taking a, a sketch uh, a notebook and making, you know, this like little cartoons going like this. That's why cartoons look funny because there are not so many uh, frames per, per, per second. And today when they have those, uh, you know, I, I kind of like the old cartoons, old cartoons of old, you know, the Bugs Bunny and the Popeye and all these things. I don't like so much the new uh computerized cartoons like you know the pixar movies and all that stuff like this why because it's too real if i want to watch a real movie i want to watch a real movie i want to watch cartoons because of that but it's so dynamic so every moment you're a different person if you say if somebody asks you how are you say oh same old same old you don't know what you're saying it means that at a certain point you're oblivious to the changes that occur to you I mean, even if the end of this conversation, you're not the same person as you were before because that might have brought some, uh, uh, bring a certain light to your life. You're not the same person. That renewal all the time is, and it's something to remember. And that's the whole concept behind the story that we have with, the, with Shlomo Amelech, the ring that he made. It says, this should pass. Gamze Yavo. This also should pass. Everything passes. And it reminds you that when you, Things are good. It could be bad. When things are bad, it could be good. It only stops when you're dead. As long as you're alive, it's always in a constant change. and always in a constant move. And that comes to expression in the concept of Sferot. And many times a person is being defined by, by his actions. And sometimes his uh, experience in the past can cause them to kind of lock in a certain self-definition, which is, let's say, to this matter, let's say, a negative, or that society will define him in a negative way. And it's very important to understand, right, when you reveal yourself to the concept of Sferot, is to understand that the uh, format of the soul is not static. It is, and there are always new possibilities and new opportunities. And, and for example, it comes to play a role in the uh, willingness, for example, of society to deal with uh, ex-convicts or prisoners. Are they doomed for life to be bad? And is it that they are doomed for life because we doomed them for life and we don't show them an opportunity to change? It's like the famous uh, experiment that they did in a jail in India when they start to uh, practice mindfulness and people saw a difference in their life. It's not that mindfulness meditation is some kind of a magic tool that changes your life. Whether you use it or you don't use it, your life changes all the time. It just brought to, to their realization that things change and there is hope. Basically, understanding that is understanding that there is, that there is hope. And it's very, very important to understand that the, the, the life and your soul is not static. And there's always change and everything is different. And, and, and even behaviors that repeat themselves, all those situations that repeat themselves all the time are basically a result of wrong usage of endless resources, resources that were given to us. You don't use the resources we're giving to you in the appropriate manner. If you find yourself in the same situation over and over again, means that you are doing something wrong in utilizing your abilities. You could always read the map in a different way and to find new ways, new path, and so on and so forth. That's why, for example, I, 
I appreciate GPS system in the car, but I really despise it because it does not allow you to ever get lost. As I told you many times, when my wife was not so busy, we used to go driving in the car. What did we used to do? We used to get in the car and just drive somewhere, whatever it would take us, no GPS, no nothing. We'd just get lost, deliberately get lost. And through that getting lost, we would find amazing places and meet amazing people and be in amazing situations and things that I would never even find in a book because it's just like off the beaten path kind of a thing. And that's tremendous beauty. So when you use the GPS, you only go in the same path. So even that is something, yes, you should appreciate it because it'll help you. You can use it as a resources, but don't lock yourself on only using it because that creates a dependency. And then that dependency takes away your freedom. Any dependency, whether it's on drugs, on GPS, on government, any dependency takes away your freedom. So when you find new paths and you find new abilities and you should change the way you think, if, if your life is a mechanical thing over and over and over again, you basically, you know, you, you basically got in a time loop. I think there was a movie like this years ago, but a, a weatherman who got stuck into a time loop. And it's a very interesting movie because I, I forgot who was Dan Aykroyd, I think was the actor. I forgot, I don't know. But the concept of this, that many times we are in a time loop, we don't realize, yes, things change, the leaf change, but it's the same thing over another month, another day, another week, another year, another this. It's the same thing over and it doesn't make sense. And sometimes you do need to get yourself lost a little bit. And, and in situation, if you go from one job to another and you see yourself, uh, uh, you change job, you change location, and you're still the same problems, you know, you probably are set in your own habits that generate that same response. And you need to find new paths and new ways of thinking or maybe new things and maybe a career change that will help you come out from this blunder that you at and find different ways of operation that you did not allow you, that were there, but you were not allowed to see yourself be, before. So, and, and that comes a realization. And I told you this many times, when we look at the Sfirata Omer, and then there's the insert, every day is different because every day is a different reflection in those 50 days that we count the over the 50 gates that we enter ourselves and every gate is different and so on and so forth. So by understanding that very complex and gentle uh, uh, situation of human behavior that really embody with itself so many different powers that sometimes are even contradicting and opposing one another, you could also understand the complexity of the human soul and understanding or, or lack of understanding could really uh, cause you a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of suffering. And understanding the complexity and the ability, there are many options, and don't be set in your ways, could really prevent you a lot of suffering. What you could do in many complex situations is try to be able to see the or to look at the map new, in order to understand all the powers that work in it. And you can come to a new, a new order, a new format that maybe could take you away from the, from the, the bind that you're at. You know, what they call sometimes cold cases. Cold cases will be, let's say, you know, criminal cases that they kept on approaching the same way over and over and over again because they got into a habit and nobody can solve them until comes somebody from the outside and says, let me look at this differently. And again, as I told you, don't try to fit your theory into the evidence. Try to fit the evidence to your theory, right? Whichever way. In other words, your theory is just there to help you solve the problem. But don't try to come up already predetermined and then apply your theory into your evidence. So understand that, that there is hope. There is a way to change. And you can come up with it. The only thing is, you need to choose to do that. That somebody would not do for you. It's all up to you. And at that happy note, boys and girls, so have a wonderful day. 
please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And I hope to see you all again next time. Have a wonderful day.